The 533rd edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head on over to Cut.com, that's K-U-T-T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick for a chance to win 100 times your entry in NBA, MLB, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code MMASGPN to get a 100% deposit match. And finally, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month. Start making smarter bets today. Heidi Ho, DeGenerinos, and welcome to the MMA Gambling Podcast and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, episode 533. It's going out to baseball. Baseball starts today. Toronto Blue Jays are going to win the World Series this year. No, probably not. The yeah, the, If you're watching YouTube, the, the team that my co-host just pointed to on his head, they are my pick to win the World Series this year. So uh, thank you for coming to the show. I'm wondering if you're, this is not the baseball podcast. We have a very good MLB gambling podcast that you should listen to every day um regardless but um we've been on every day hopefully you've enjoyed it this is our fourth day in a row then we're going to take a little break and come back on sunday fifth, but fifth day in a row fifth day in a row excuse me you're right sunday we had two fifth day in a row um today we're gonna this is the second part of ufc fight night blanchfield versus who's she fighting fioro i i didn't even uh kick off um anyway i'll do all that soon Last episode, I didn't give you all the info about this fight card. I apologize for people listening to prelims. I'll make sure I give you all the info today. But anyhow, it's a very solid fight card coming going down from Atlantic City. Uh, we're going to break down the main card today and the props and the dogs and the parlays and all that fun stuff too. So um, my co-host and I were on the same page, uh, save for one fight where I went dog and he did not, which is crazy um, on the prelims. So make sure you listen to that if you have not already. Uh, and I, we didn't bug you last episode about subscribing on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. We're almost at 400. We're like two or three people away. So subscribe, uh, go around the house to all your people who you live with all their devices. Make sure they subscribe as well. It's free. It's not like they're going to be mad when we show up in their feed, right? No. How could they be mad about that? Uh, spouses love our show. All right. Um, let's kick things off. I'm still recording from a different spot. I feel kind of exposed. There's more of my body, uh, showing on in this camera <laughs> angle, but anyhow, that's okay. Um, let's bring in the handsome half of the duo. Uh, you heard his voice before in, interrupting, which he likes to do. He's wearing an Atlanta Braves hat. Like I said, they're probably my pick to win the World Series. It's El- Daniel Gumby Vreeland. Hello. Yeah, they, they look good this year, and they just brought back, uh, you know, because this is not a baseball podcast. But do you know the matter. saga of Jesse Chavez being an Atlanta Brave? <laughs> No, I don't know much about Jesse Chavez. So Jesse name. Jesse Chavez is a reliever. This is a fun story. They traded him yep. to the Angels for Rysiel Iglesias as part of mm-hmm. that trade. Uh, and then the Angels shortly thereafter DFA'd him uh, and he signed back with the Braves, um, which is a, a fun little move right there. And yeah. then this offseason, they traded him to the White Sox for Ronaldo Lopez, who's going to be their number five starter. And just yesterday, uh, the White Sox DFA'd Jesse Chavez, who re-signed with the Atlanta Braves no, and got put back on their tw- they got put back on his twenty-five man roster. So uh, you just yeah. can't quit that guy, can they? They can't no. quit him. It's got to be the rec specs. I think once you have rec specs on, uh, you have to keep that guy. Every every little league team growing up had a kid with rec specs, right? Yeah, and, it's true. Uh, yeah, so true. so there you go. Oh. I don't think I can I can back the Braves now that I see that uh, Canadian Michael Soroka is no longer on the team. He was part of that trade. They didn't DFA him. the White Sox. Didn't DFA him. He's like I want to say they're number two starter in the Chicago. Think things are not going well in Chicago. <laughs> no, well Soroka was good, and then he got hurt. But yeah, Atlanta does not need him. They're pretty much pitching and batting. They're pretty much stacked. So anyhow, like I said, this isn't a baseball podcast, but we can talk about whatever we want. It's our show, right? I'm the controller. I said last episode, so I can say whatever I want. Right? Not gonna yeah. be. Gum, sure. Gummy can only say things after I uh, I tee him up, say things. Um, you're watching and listening to us on the SGPN network, right? Of course you are. If you're watching this somewhere else, if someone's bootlegging our stuff, let me tell you, there's going to be problems. So let us know. But anyhow, you're you're uh, for sure listening to watch us on SGPN. 
you're more than likely know that SGPN is the home to 20 plus gambling podcasts other than ours, and they're all completely free. That's the big thing, right? In honor of March Madness, this week's feature shows are our flagship show, which is Sports Gambling Podcast, with our bosses hosting it. Ryan, Real Money Kramer, Sean Stack, and the Money Green. Uh, the guys have picked every NCAA basketball tournament game against the spread since 2012, first half unders. They've also, also quite a few years ago, discover first half unders is the way to go. Uh, if that's not good enough, and it's not because we, we have more coming. We have the college basketball experience, which is just about college basketball. We have Colby Dant on there, AKA pick Dundee. I think he's maybe one of the few people who have been here longer than I have. Um, Ryan, Muddy Lime Mac and producer Noah B. Uh, they continue their unmatched coverage of college basketball betting. You can subscribe today to the sports gambling podcast podcast and the college basketball experience podcast, wherever you get your podcast, make sure you do that. If you haven't already. All right. Yesterday's show, I forgot to tell you all about this fight card. I got right into the picks. This is going down in Atlantic City. UFC Fight Night, Blanchard versus Fierro, a.k.a. UFC Atlantic City. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, much to the chagrin of my co-host, who was very upset when I when I discovered that a few episodes ago. But this is a late one. 7 p.m. for the prelims. That was yesterday's episode. They are on ESPN+, Plus, uh, Sportsnet up here in Canada. Uh, except for the first hour. That's a weird Canadian thing. The first hour is never shown here on TV. It's only on UFC Fight Pass. Always been the way. Anyhow, uh, main card, ESPN and Sportsnet, 10 p.m. Eastern. And that is what we're zeroing in on today, the main card. This is all going down in Boardwalk Hall, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Have you been there, Gumby? I have, yeah. A couple yeah, of times. For, for fights, right? Yeah, I went there and saw... Uh... Uh, World Series of Fighting card with yep. Arlovsky on the main main event. I remember, and then I, I, might saw, have, I might have sent you there. Yeah, and then I went and saw a Bellator card there with Rampage main eventing at one point nice. in time too. Nice, very good. Yes, I remember the good old days. All right, let's kick things off, shall we? It is a welterweight fight that is kicking off the fight card. Did the order I do it in yesterday? Was that the order you had it in as well, Gumby? Yeah, yeah, we're on the same page. All right, good. Yeah, you're a topology guy as well. So I figured. All right, this is a watchway fight. Chidi Njikwani, Reese McKee, US versus Ireland. Um, just like yesterday's card had an Irish fighter kicking things off as well. Uh, all right, Skeletor is Reese McKee's nickname, a fitting nickname. 13, 5, and 1, 10 knockouts, 3 submissions. So he's finished everyone that he has beat. He's been knocked out himself twice. 0 oh, and 3 in the UFC over two stints. Uh, he, he's had a pretty tough uh, strength of schedule, though. Uh, he's won, gone three and one over his last four. He did lose his last fight, which was his re-debut in the UFC. Before that, he was the Cage Warriors champion, also regional champion. Used to fight up, at, or sorry, down, excuse me, at lightweight. Seven years younger than Enchikwani. More active landing strikes than Enchikwani. However, he's been outstruck in the UFC by 3.41 strikes per minute. He's at plus 124. Chitty Bang Bang, one of the best nicknames in the game, is 22 and 10 with one no contest, 14 knockouts, one submission, it's been knocked out five times, submitted three times, two and three in the UFC. He won his first two. We were getting, oh, this is this guy's interesting. And then he's lost three straight, including getting TKO'd in his last fight. One no on contender series, five and three in Bellator. He's missed weight seven times at welterweight, Gumby. I guess that's why he's not at welterweight. It's an astounding number. Um, what else can I tell you about him? Uh, used to be a welterweight. I guess you figured that out already, though. 2007 pro MMA debut. Actually, he, this is a welterweight, isn't it? What am I saying? Yeah, yeah, used at, yeah, used to fight at middleweight. He hasn't missed weight for a while. I, I will give him that, but still, this is something to keep in uh, keep an eye on. Um, was regional champion, 12-1-1 one one in kickboxing. Professionally, an inch height, two inches, reach over McKee, better striking stats, better grappling stats, and he's outstruck his UFC opponents by 0.85 strikes per minute, minus 140. A striker versus a hyped Irish prospect. Of course, I'm taking the striker. Um, over the overhyped uh, Irish guy. Another bad matchup for McKee. A, a better matchup than he's been given, but uh, I think he's going to get outstruck in this fight uh, against OJ and Kwani, and we probably are getting a pretty decent line at minus 140. I'm actually going to go McKee. Uh, oh, we're getting a bad line, I mean. Yeah, I line. um. It, here, here's the thing for me. As you know, I've been a Chidi Njikwani fan in the past. I was actually an Anthony Njikwani fan, if you want to go back before Ooh. that. um. But the problem for me in this fight is that what we've seen out of Chidi and Jikawani in those last three losses is just absolutely no gas tank, right? Like an ability to put it on somebody early. 
and then just have nothing next. And you can't say that about Reese McKee, right? Mm -hmm. Like Reese McKee, that dude has got a motor. Like go back and watch his fight with judo Jim Wallhead. Dude, Wallhead hits him so hard at certain points in time. And McKee has still got gas when that fight ends. He looks like he can go another two or three rounds at the end of that fight. So I, I think we're going to see Chidi and Chikwani come out really hard. I think there's there's a couple of ways to go about betting this. If you are in the Chidi and Jaquani, you know, camp like, like Jeff is here, take Chidi and Jaquani round one. Cause I don't think after that he's worth it. You could also live bet Reese McKee's money line after round one. Cause he's probably going to take rounds two and three. If this goes to decision. And also I don't hate the like Reese McKee gets a finish in the second or in the third, which are, you know, pretty inflated numbers right now. You can see them at like plus 700 plus 900, those kind of numbers there. So even if you played both of them, you're still looking at like, you know, four to one on, on the combination. So yeah, I, I think Reese McKee takes over this one late and winds up uh, pulling it out. And also GD and Jaquani not used to dealing with somebody quite as big as he is too. Um, and granted he's a little bigger, um, but he's not used to somebody quite as long as he is. Uh, and, and that's what we're going to see here out of Reese McKee, too. He is a Skeletor, though. So um, may, maybe um, as big, but he's all bones. Um, all right. There we go. See, we we don't uh, we, we're not afraid to, uh, to disagree on fights. All right. We're dropping down to featherweights. Bill Algio, USA, Kyle Nelson, Canada. Kyle Nelson has been talked about a lot in this show recently. Uh, his nickname is The Monster. His other nickname is Willie. Did you know about that nickname, Gumby? No. Willie oh, Nelson. is that Willie Nelson? Yeah. Yes. I don't yeah. think did you I, get that off a of, you get that off of Wikipedia. I, I think uh, as Wikipedia, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure well, I trust well, that one. <laughs> well, well, no, it's true. It's true. All right, Nelson, 15, 5, and 1, five knockouts, four submissions. He's been knocked out twice, submitted once, three, four, and one in the UFC. He's won two straight. Um, before that, he's gone two, two, actually, two, he's one, two straight, and he's gone two, two, and one over his last five. So it, it's a recent surge for him. Uh, he used to fight at lightweight, was regional champion, 2012 pro on May debut, two years younger than Algio, better grappling stats. Uh, he's been outstruck in the UFC by 1.1 strikes per minute, plus 196. Senior perfecto, Bill Algio, another great nickname, even though it is incorrect. He's 18 to seven, four knockouts, seven submissions. He's been submitted twice, five and three in the UFC. He's won two straight and four or five. Own one in contender series, was regional champion, has missed weight before. Uh, one on um, World Series of Fighting, 2012 pro MMA debut. He is also a pro grappler. Inch height, two inches reach over Nelson. Better striking stats, more active landing strikes as well. He's outstruck his UFC opponents with 1.7 strikes per minute. Minus 225 over to Gumby. I'm going Algio. Uh, I mm -hmm. like uh, I like Kyle Nelson. He's really turned his career around in the last couple of fights. But the one thing I worry about here is that the way to beat Bill Algio is by like turning that pressure way up, right? Like he's a guy who likes to move and dance around in the cage and he kind of creates awkward angles and he, you know, he sort of slings that counter punch out there. And, and so in order to beat him, you got to crowd him. You got to get in his face. You got to take all of his space away. And we just didn't see any of that out of Kyle Nelson in his last couple of fights. And, and don't get me wrong. He won. He, he started to put together real performances but I just don't think he's like the right kind of style on a guy like Bill Algio. I also going into this fight, I was like, Oh, maybe Kyle Nelson. Right. I had interviewed him and I was like, Oh yeah, maybe I'm leaning that way. And uh, then I was like, he's got to be way bigger than Bill Algio. Right. Like he's a big featherweight. And then I looked at those numbers and I was like, Oh damn. He's like, he doesn't have a reach advantage in this fight. Um, that was kind of shocking to me. Cause I just think of Kyle Nelson as being a big featherweight sort of like, now be giving up size in this fight and against the guy who you you sort of can't let come forward and that's kind of the fight Kyle Nelson invites so uh unless he he drastically changes his fight style i think senior perfecto takes this one yeah i am taking the american over the canadian as well uh just better striker uh better power and he's you know he, he's he's not too bad of a grappler himself so um i think the hot streak ends here for um bill not Bill Algio, Willie Nelson, Willie the Monster Nelson. Um, all right, should we move on to another fight? Nah, I'm going to tell you about Cut first. Cut is a peer-to-peer -peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Peer-to-peer -peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. You bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. And they have tons of fun social features that give it the feel of a betting social network. Cut offers lower big and fully customizable odds. Create your own bets. 
Cut down on the payment side of things so you never have to chase anyone down for money. Social features include group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head history, user profiles, fan groups, and more. And the rewards are you get your cash back every single time you bet against your friends or other users. Get on Cut now. Check out the uh, custom bets that the SGPN staff have put up there. Uh, you can do all that by downloading Cut today in the App Store or over at cut.com. That's K-U-T-T. And use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And we're brought to you by Unrog Fantasy. Unrog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick two to five players, higher or lower on any stat total you want. If you hit it correctly, you can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Sign up today with promo code MMA SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks, as well as an instant pick em special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with our promo code MMA SGPN. Get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks, as well as an instant pick em special. You must be 18 or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concern with you play. Call 1 800 522 4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. Okie dokie, folks. We are moving uh, up to middleweight. Nursultan Ruzaboyev from what country, Gumby? Is it Uzbekistan? You're right. Uzbekistan versus Cedricus Dumas from what state, Gumby? Florida. Very, <laughs> Obviously. Very, very Florida. <laughs> Florida, man. Should be the nickname, but no. Dumas instead is going by the Reaper. Nine and one. Four knockouts. Two submissions. He's been submitted one time. Two and one in the UFC. He lost his debut. One, two straight since then. One known contender series. Used to fight at light heavyweight. Three inches of reach over Ruzaboyev. Two years younger. He's been outstruck in the UFC by 0.13 strikes per minute. Plus 220. Ruzaboyev. Black is his nickname. You can just use a color as your nickname. I guess so. For real? All right. I, I'm not going to argue with this guy. So fine. I will call you Black. Uh, 33, 8, and 2. 11 knockouts. 20 submissions. This man finishes people. He also his Browns. Because he's only been... Uh, actually, he's been finished once uh, via knockout. Once via submission. Uh, one no on UFC as part of a nine fight winning streak, all via finish. He has multiple regional championships on his mantle. Correct. Get the shirt. Just like the one I'm wearing sports game and slash store. You fight at watch weight 2014 pro on May debut three inches height over Dumas twice as active as Dumas is striking based off of his one fight. Uh, that fight, he outstruck his opponent by 2.34 strikes per minute minus two fifty. Uh, did mention Dumas was was in jail recently, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, which, I think he's yeah, currently out on currently out on bail, maybe like awaiting yeah. trial. Yeah, yeah, which is very Florida, uh, very UFC to be uh, uh, having a guy like this fight for them too. But uh, obviously, I'm picking against him, uh, not just because of that, but he's fighting a killer, Gumby, a killer, uh, a killer that's probably going to finish him because that's what he does. He finishes people. But the problem is, if you want to play a prop here, I guess you can go inside if the number is decent because. Who knows how he's going to finish him? He he does both. I, I've got a little insight on what I think uh, in terms of that, that but I'll, I'll save it for later. Um, Ooh, so so nice. Ruza Boy, Ruza Boy F for me is obviously the clear pick here too. Despite all the stuff that's going on in Dumas's life uh, that you also might want to handicap into this one too. Like Ruza Boy F, first of all, being bigger than him is a huge feat because the thing about Dumas is, is that's kind of his best attribute, right? That he can be longer and lankier than a lot of the guys he's fighting at middleweight. And that's just not even true here. So yeah, I, I like Ruza Boy F for that reason. And then when you add it, he's got a wrestling advantage. And also like Dumas's record is like, it's so frustrating because he beat two people he definitely shouldn't have beat, right? Like Cody Brundage should have beat him. Uh, but instead he kept jumping guillotine and winding up in bottom position and then like <laughs> losing a decision. And we Mateusz love that. Pa- Mateusz Panage on contender series. And by the way, I picked Dumas on contender series. Cause I said he was going to knock out Panage and like Panage is so much better than Dumas. All he had to do was strike at range with him and he would have just absolutely pieced him up. And instead he was like, here's my neck for a guillotine. Go ahead and try. <laughs> uh, and that's exactly what he did. And he finished him. So, I think Ruzaboyev is just like not the guy who makes mistakes that Dumas can capitalize on. He hits super hard. He's got a great submission game. If he does choose to wrestle, Dumas can't do a damn thing about it, I don't think. This is a uh negative 250 is is a parlay builder here. You know, like I I'd oh. say yeah, I'd say the money line on Ruzaboyev you can throw in in parlays. Throw it in a parlay, Gumby says. All right. Um we we're both taking if I didn't make it clear, we were both taking Ruzaboyev here. Um, moving right along, we're sticking with middleweights. Bruno Silva, 
Brazil versus Chris Weidman, <laughs> USA. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, all right, Weidman, 15 and seven, six knockouts, four submissions. He's been knocked out six times, all of them uh, fairly recently. 11 and seven in the UFC. Used to be the champion of the world. He's lost two straight, and he's only won one of his last five. He's not won since August of 2020. Used to fight at light heavyweight. Was a regional champion at 2009 Pro MMA debut. Wrestling champion, a grappling champion. Uh, two inches of reach. Sorry, two inches of height, four inches of reach over over uh, Silva. He's got better grappling sets than Silva. He's been outstruck in the UFC by 0.29 strikes per minute, plus 225. Silva, armored, blindado is the nickname. Uh, 23 and 10. With 20 knockouts, oh boy, oh boy. What could go wrong here, right? Uh, he's been submitted seven times. Four and four in the UFC. He's lost two straight as well, and only won one of his last five. Used to be, uh, actually, no, he didn't. I'm looking at the wrong thing there. Um, I think he was a regional champion is what I meant to type there. Uh, 2010 Pro MMA debut. Five years younger than Weidman. More active landing strikes. He's been outstruck in the UFC by 0.9 strikes per minute. Minus 265. Probably not a wide enough line, is it? No, it's not wide enough. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Weidman, Weidman hasn't looked good lately. He's slow. Late, he's up against lately. Bruno. He, he's up against Bruno <laughs> Silva, who hits so freaking hard. Um, Bruno Silva's actually also shown like a fair bit of wrestling too. Like, if you want to go back to his first couple of fights in the UFC, like he mixes it in there a little bit. Did he? Is he the one who fought Michelle Pereira? Um, uh, ooh, the no, Alex, Alex Pereira, Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure he fought Alex Pajeda and like showed a little bit of wrestling skills in there too. And so like, do I think he's as good of a wrestler as Chris Weidman? Not prime Chris Weidman, but Chris Weidman who's had his head dribbled off the mat like a uh, basketball a couple of times. Maybe he's that good. And if not, at least the next round starts on the feet. Cause I don't know what Weidman's got as far as sub skills anymore, ability to get the fight to the ground. And I do know that I, have tons of questions about whether or not he can continue to take abuse like this. So yeah, give me the, give me the kickboxer. Who's probably going to rip his legs too, because let's face it. That's how Weidman lost his last fight too. So might as well pile that on there, Bruno Silva. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go with him. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a glue factory fight. They're sending him out to the glue factory. Chris Weidman's glue factory. We could call this episode. Um, Yeah, this is not, this is not good. (laughs) Good matchup for him. Uh, I'm sure he thinks he has another title run in him, but uh, yeah, he's going to get knocked out probably here. And it's probably not a good thing that he's fighting anymore, especially if they're going to put him with um, kickboxers that knock people out. So this is an obvious play for um, Blindado Silva here. We're to our main event already flying right through the episode. Um, We're not in the main fight, event. Co-main event. Sorry. There you go. I misspoke. Vicente Luque, Brazil. But he was born in Jersey, right? Uh, yeah, he was born in New Jersey. Yeah. The Brazilian parents, yeah. Yep. Joaquin Buckley from, he's kind of a Brazilian name, but he is from the United States of America. Three, five in the rounds. Walter Waite, I'm going to tell you, this fight is basically a pick at this point. I'm going to tell you about the new Mansa. Mansa means king, and that would be Buckley. 17 to 6 with 12 knockouts. He's been knocked out four times. 7 to 4 in the UFC. He's won two straight. Before that, he lost two straight. He's fed at middleweight. 3 and 2 in Bellator. 2014 Pro MMA debut. Uh, Ninja reached three years younger than Luque. He's outstruck his UFC points by 0.56 strikes per minute, minus 103. Luque, the silent assassin, 22, 9, and 1. 11 knockouts, 8 submissions. He's been knocked out once, submitted twice. 15 and 5 in the UFC. 1 and 2 over his last three, but he did win his last fight. Uh, 1 and 1 in Ultimate Fighter. He's fight at middleweight. 2009 Pro MMA debut. He has been, uh, he's actually outstruck his UFC opponents by 0.02 strikes per minute. So just squeak by there. Uh, he's an inch taller than Buckley. He's more active landing the strikes. He's at minus 115. I like Buckley here. Give me a Buckley. Uh, I wish it was still a plus beside his name. It's uh, People have agreed with me, I guess, and it's, it's gone into the negatives, but he's still a slight dog here. Uh, super powerful striker. I still have concerns about Luke and uh, his ability to take damage, uh, even though he did win his last fight. Um, and Buckley's not that bad of a, of a uh, wrestler as well I, I i think he's going to win a striking battle here and i like him at minus 103 yeah i just don't know how buckley looks as a wrestler at this weight mm-hmm. class because to your point yeah like in middleweight he did sort of hold up there a little bit although i don't and i don't know necessarily who he was tested against now that i'm thinking of it um but regardless yeah his, his wrestling held up at middleweight but will his wrestling hold up <laughs> against like a a legit guy in the welterweight division 
who is going to have the gas tank to go 15 minutes of wrestling offense here? Because we just watched Vicente Luque take down RDA eight times in a fight and not look tired at the end of that fight, right? Like in, in Buckley's a powerful guy and he's a really good striker, but what happens when all that range is gone and he's got Vicente Luque on top of him? Or, or at least pressing him against the cage. I don't know that that power survives, especially now that he's down a weight class and he's draining himself out a little bit more. I, I worry about what that looks like. So I'm going to take Luke here. I think he turns this into just an absolute grind, just like a fight that we, we're we going to see dragged out over 15 minutes. And, and I think he comes out looking a little bit better with the positioning. And and it's not like he's the guy who just like holds position and doesn't do damage. You know, he loves a, he loves a violent ass fight. So, yeah, give me Vicente Luque in that one. Luque's eight takedowns have kind of in his last fight have kind of skewed his stats. He doesn't have any other takedowns in the UFC. Uh, you have to go all the way back to uh, Leon Edwards' fight back in 2017. So uh, all the but fights he's, in then he's taking, So no then he's taking down. Then he's taking down Leon <laughs> Edwards. There you go. Uh, I mean, <laughs> and, and the thing is, is in a lot of those fights, though, I don't think he thinks he needs takedowns, right? Yeah. Like in a lot of those fights, he has been the the mean berserker brawler and when he decides that he doesn't want to do that with rda right because rda tough guy you don't you don't want to be throwing hands with rda willy-nilly like that yeah he, he just decided to take him down and that's after being what was it jeff neal who kind of changed the trajectory of luke's yeah. career here it, yeah. it's like since then he's been like okay well let me let me let me be a little safer in the way that i go about this and i think you're going to see that approach here against buckley we shall see we shall see um main event time already and then we'll have our fancy plays after that the main event is a women's flyweight belt we're not complaining about this main event on a fight night card that's for sure aaron blanchfield versus manon fioro u.s versus france two of our favorite female fighters uh, of this podcast are hooking up here five five minute rounds and i'm going to tell you about the french woman first manon fioro the beast 11 and one with six knockouts she's been submitted at one time she's won six She's on 6-0 and in the UFC, has not lost a fight since June of 2018. Uh, she has multi-region championships on her mantle. Greg, get that shirt. Sportsgamepodcast.com slash store. Uh, three inches taller than Blanchfield, plus 165. Uh, cold-blooded Aaron Blanchfield, 12-1, and two knockouts, four submissions, never been finished in a fight. 6-0 in the UFC. She's on a nine-fight winning streak, is not lost since February 2019. So both these ladies are on nice runs here. Uh, was a grappling champion. An inch of reach over Fiero, nine years younger. That could be a, a big factor here. Minus 180. This is the fight where the odds are getting wider and wider, which is kind of surprising. What did you say the, the odds were on Blanchfield now? Uh, Blanche was minus 180. Yeah. Is, is it my turn or is it yours? It's your turn. You got yeah, to make a tough choice. I'm going to go with Blanchfield because I think she's going to win the fight. But I'll be honest. I, I don't see any value on her line anymore. You know, like, I, I think her wrestling, especially over a 25-minute fight, is going to play up. I think she's going to eventually get this fight to the ground enough that her, her submission skills are going to take over. By the way, her by submission might be the way to play her if you want. You can see that, plus 250. Um, and, But I could also see her just, like, winning a 25-minute decision where she just drowns Firo in takedowns. Firo is a good wrestler. I know the Discord has been talking about trusting her wrestling more and, you know, oh, look at her takedown defense numbers. And it's like, yeah, those are her takedown defense numbers against Melissa Gatto, right? Like in, in no offense to Melissa Gatto, but like that, you know, that that's what we're looking at here. Um, we're not looking at somebody like Aaron Blanchfield who is ragdolled like very good grapplers, right? Like she made, she made Miranda Maverick look like she'd never grappled before in her life. Um, and that, that's a really high level of wrestling. So I, I think this eventually gets down with that being said, you, you can't go near two to one here on Blanchfield. There's, there's no way Firo is just too sharp on the V there's a clear path to victory for Firo. You know, like when you see a number like negative 200, you're like, it's kind of got to be a fluky win, uh, in order for me to really like somebody, uh, at those kind of numbers. And like, there, there's not, it's not a fluky win, but no Firo by, just absolutely piecing up Blanchfield and stuff with a couple of takedowns is a real possibility. Um, so yeah, I don't like the number. I think it's a dog or pass spot for me. It's going to be a pass because I do like Blanchfield. I'm taking Fioro. I will take the dog here in the fight. Um, better striker. Uh, obviously not that Blanchfield's horrible on feet. She's definitely not a Mackenzie Dern type uh, grapple only fighter. Um, yeah, I, I like Fioro's striking. Um, 
she she plays it safe in fights she doesn't go ham or anything like that and uh she has shown so far that she has decent takedown defense and decent wrestling of her own obviously there's levels uh blanchfield is off also one of those grapplers that isn't a no wrestle grappler she's she's good at uh good at um getting opponents down uh so basically I'll, I'll go with the better striker here um and i think fiero is the better striker and i like the line obviously because it's at plus 165 so there you go two episodes in a row i've taken a dog and you have not gumby we're well i just took one, early, I took one i took one earlier on this card that you missed right. out on okay fine so we're even steven then um all right let's recap our picks and then don't you go away because we have our, our fancy money making plays for you um he's got blanchfield i got fiero I have uh, Buckley. He has Luke. Uh, we both have Silva. We both have Ruzaboyev. We both have Algio. I have Njikwani. He has Reese McKee. Did I get all those correct, Gumby? Sounds it. Good for me. All right. Before our fancy plays, Hall of Fame bets I need to tell you about. You win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame bets, the sports betting analytics platform. For parlays, player props, and game lines, research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay ID in the Hall of Fame bets revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent, data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. All right, locks, dogs, props off the bat. I think it's my turn or to start things off. All right. I should have been prepared with a, a, a lock pick for you. Who do I want as my lock? Um, let's take Aslan against the pleasure man as my lock, even though he did lose the uh, original fight. Uh, I think these guys are headed in different directions. Um, Aslan is my pick minus 125. If you want to hear why, listen to yesterday's episode. Yeah, I'm going Ebo Aslan too. Okay. I think it's just too much power, too hittable on Turkali's spot. Not going to make those mistakes twice. Okay. Uh, my dog, Andre Petrosky, plus 200. Let's go with a big dog. Uh, he's come through for us before as a dog. I think you can do it again. And once again, yesterday's episode, we broke down why. We think that. Yep, I'm going Petrosky too. Oh my gosh. Uh, yep, love the big uh, the big takedowns. I love that he's going to control the fight, like that his hand's a little bit better. So yeah, give me Petrosky. I'll match you on both of those. All right, let's see if you match me on my prop. I don't think you will. Uh, I don't think we've ever matched on, on props before. I'm taking Bruno Silva via knockout. Obviously, he's going to destroy Chris Weidman. Minus 120, you know, not the greatest line, but uh, I think this one's pretty uh, certain to hit. So Silva via knockout, minus 120. I'm going to stay on the main card and take a knockout too. Uh, I'll take uh, Nursultan Ruzaboyev by a knockout. I think uh, despite the fact that he's got a ton of subs on his record here, um, he's coming off of that big KO victory. I think he's going to, you know, sort of oblige uh, Cedricus Dumas in the type of fight he wants, uh, which is, you know, letting him throw on the feet and just knocking him clean out. But even if he does decide to take him to the ground, the ground and pound's there for sure, uh, especially against a guy like Dumas who might just – you know, not give up his back because he's stubborn or something like that. And so if Nurse Altan Ruzaboyev does that, uh, the line right now on uh, Ruzaboyev KO is plus 250, which is just too Fantastic. juicy for me to leave there. So, Yep. All right. We shall recap. Uh, we both have Ebo Aslin as our lock. Petrosky as our dogs. He likes Ruzaboyev knockout. I like that too. Uh, Silva knockout is my prop pick. All right. Hunger Man Jong, Super Fan Parlay, Two Fight Parlay. Gumby, what do you have for us this week? So I'm going to I'm gonna get a little crazy on this one. Uh, I'd like Ooh. Andre Petrosky knockout. Uh, I, I, mostly because all the reasons we talked about before, he's got a good gas tank. He's great on top. He's got KO power. Um, and when I went to just dig into the props and look at him, I saw his prop for KO was plus 750. Uh, wow. Which was, I mean, I guess he's a plus 200 dog and like he's got sub skills too. And, you know, but. I can't see him subbing Malkin and I can see him overwhelming Malkin. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'll start with that piece and it's probably a fine piece to just play on its own, but I'll pair it with Reese McKee by knockout here too. Uh, Reese McKee, who I already mentioned, I kind of like here. He's like plus 124, you said originally. You're going to get him at plus 200 to move that up to knockout. I think that's probably a, a nice little buy there. And so when you put those two together, you're going to get plus 2450. Whoa. Petrosky and McKee knockouts plus 2450. 
I don't like the McKee one, but hey, I'm wrong sometimes. And Gumby's right sometimes. These things happen in MMA. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed this here episode. We're going to be back Sunday. We're going to count our money on Sunday. And then uh, we'll kick the week off right with some regional picks to kick off next week. In the meantime, we shall be hanging out in the Discord. We're always in the Discord. Even when we're, we're uh, recording, we're in the Discord. Uh, SportsGamblingPockets.com slash Discord. Uh, Twitter, SGPN MMA is the handle. He's at Gumby Vreeland. I'm a Jeff Fox writer there and on Instagram. Uh, get in my money MMA Substack, moneymma.substack.com. Enter my free pickup contest I run every week for the UFC. Gumby's got Top Turtle MMA podcast. Uh, this week, he has Kyle Nelson, even though he doesn't talk about Canada at all. Um, and why am I blanking on? Oh, uh, Court McGee, who uh, has lots of interesting things to say, as per usual. And get onto our website, sportsgamingpodcast.com, sportsgamingpodcast.com slash store to get your merch and sportsgamingpodcast.com slash Patreon to help us crush corporate gambling. All right, Gumby, say goodbye. All right, I'm David Gibby Freeland. He's Jeff Willie Fox, and we will see you on Sunday. 